Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Seabed. And roughly at the same time our banana boat grew lighter as Takako crashed into the sea with a loud splash. And then she was gone forever. Oh no, there she is. That was fun, said Takako, her breathing ragged. Good for you. Takako didn't wait for the boat to pick her up and swam to the shore by herself. What if that picture came out well? As they returned to dry land, the person from earlier came over to sell the photo in question. In broken Japanese, he explained how he'd sent it to the hotel after developing it. It costs about a thousand yen. How much is that? Like... A dollar? So it's not included in the initial pay, figures. But oh, yeah. It reminded me that I had a similar experience with pushy photograph. But photograph sellers at another resort. But as I was thinking that, Taco came back and gave the man the okay. It'd still be fun even if I'm not on it. But you're right. I picked up the sunglasses I left with them for keeping and turned back to Takako. Wait, I thought the picture they took, uh, they took it. She was on it. She was looking at the bright sky. Whoa, whoa, whoa. As I attached the worn belt connected to the parachute to my waist and released the lever holding the contraption pinned down, I shot into the air with a thrilling sensation in my stomach. Oh, are they, uh, air gliding? The boat I was in moments before it became a tiny speck below me. Oh, it's the, um... I don't know what that is. But they have that. That looks like fun, though. Aww. They're together. Wait. So, Tiger isn't in a bathing suit. Like, the, the lower half? Huh? Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't think it would go this high. What is this called? This looks so much fun. I held my hair down with one hand to stop it from flapping in the wind. Are you sure this string will really hold us down? The rope, our sole lifeline connecting us to the boat, let out an unsettling creak that seemed to upset Takago. Of course it will. Well, I mean, if, if it, uh, you know, if it does break the, you know, the rope to the boat, I'm pretty sure you could just, you know, glide down slowly or something. Pretty sure. Of course it will. Even if it didn't, this would just be a simple parachute, no? Yeah, see? I see. Look, they're waving at us. The instructor left far away on the small boat below was looking at us. Away back and as I thought, the rope extended and we shot even further into the sky. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Taco was squeaking miserably behind my back. Admittedly though, even I felt a strange sensation in my stomach as I glanced down and saw the sea so far below I could barely make out anything. During this sense of thrill, I swung my legs back and forth a few times, shaking the contraption holding us. This in turn caused Taco to let out a pitiful scream. Hey! I clutched my shoulders. Eh. I stopped looking downward and inspected the island itself. I wonder if we can see our hotel from here. Uh-huh. Ah. Isn't that the cape we've just been to? I pointed at the cape jutting out from the cliff beyond the beach where we rode that banana boat earlier. A familiar white lighthouse stood on it. Where? Ah, yeah, I think that's the place. Looks beautiful from here too, doesn't it? Beyond the cape, as far as the eye could see, stretched the vast cobalt blue sea. I didn't think I'd be seeing it again from this perspective. I realized that the parachute began descending. I looked down to see the boat previously no more than a speck in size, getting bigger and bigger below us. Our little aerial sightseeing came to an end sooner than Takuru could calm down. <laughs> Aww. Borrowed two chairs with parasols as we returned to the beach. Finally able to relax a little, I leaned against my chair, put on my sunglasses, and pulled out a book from my handbag. I go spent the rest of the time playing in the water, carrying out the shells and starfish she found to show me. Just as I noticed a fat cloud drifting out, drifting away in the sky it began to rain, lasting only a few minutes before giving way to the sunshine again. Everyone at the beach retreated to seek shelter at the cafeteria or beneath palm trees, but came back to their old spots as soon as the rain abated, continuing on as if nothing had happened. I spotted a bird looking for prey at the shore and wondered if it was a sandpiper or something like that. And as the rays of dust began to tint the blue sky, the azure sea, and the white beach and the hue of orange, Takuru came back urging us to go have dinner. Huh. Ooh. 
had uh ribs or not ribs that like is that ribs actually no what is that? is that is that steak no that's ribs right i don't know in the end we decided on a steak restaurant next to our hotel oh it was steak interior wide like that of a family restaurant was decorated in the country style oh it looks so good too after being shown to a spacious round table, we sat down facing each other. I spotted a burly foreigner wolfing down a massive hamburger behind Takago. And standing in the corner, likely the security guard was dressed like a chef from a western. A sizable glass was placed in front of me with an audible clink. Isn't that yours? Looks like tea. Ah, oh, I think it is. Takago pointed at herself saying tea and the glass traveled to her side. My coffee came a bit later, but the portion was once again unusually big. They advertise that the drinks are free, but I don't think I can possibly drink all this in one go. My stomach began to ache at the very sight of that massive, almost one liter jug. What? One, one liter jug? Of, of what? Coffee? Huh? Is this really tea? Don't tell me you expect them to serve you oolong in a place like this. Damn. I can't drink this. I asked them to give you some milk and sugar. How many kilos of sugar would I need to add to this thing? Don't forget it all, it all go to your body. If I had to drink this at home, I'd rather end up fat or a damn bodybuilder. I go took a few gulps from her mug of black tea. It has a pretty strong taste. After a bit, taco steak and my salmon arrived, along with the salad we both ordered. I wonder if uh, there's some... Um, I wonder if it's like a Long Island iced tea or something, or, or you know, something with a little bit of uh, adult drinks, you know, mixed in somehow. I didn't notice it. I did notice it when I was looking at the menu, but it seemed like both of what we ordered came in they said with extra pilaf and bread. Oh, I didn't read the first bit. After a bit, taco steak and my salmon arrived along with the salad we both ordered. Our, our otherwise wide table started feeling narrow with all that food on it. This is quite the portion we have here. Wow, it's like out of a manga. Boys wanted to have a feast like this. Hope you worked up an appetite. Contrast to Takako's excitement, all I could feel was anxiety as I picked up my fork and knife, wondering how I should even begin cutting up this 300 gram beast of a salmon fish. That's not fish. As we returned to the hotel, Takako crumpled down in the bed, clutching her belly. At first she was excitedly wolfing down her food, but by the time half of her steak was gone, her expression clouded over and tears began welling in her eyes. Before we knew it, our exciting dinner turned into a battle of willpower. I made Tago eat the pilaf I could no longer finish by myself, but neither of us could even touch the bread and ultimately asked the waitress to pack it for takeaway. You can have this tomorrow morning. Only miserable groaning reached me in lieu of an answer. I wonder if I should put it in the fridge. I'm not sure for a few months, but ultimately decided to leave the paper bag next to our teapot instead, as I want I didn't want it to get wet. After that, I took a shower and changed to my indoor clothes. Recommending a shower to Takago, who was still lying on the bed, seemed to have made her slowly get up. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm feeling a bit better, I think. By the way, what do you think we should do about tomorrow? Ah, tomorrow? That'd be fun, I can't wait. She answered in a soulless voice and continued to the bathroom, undressing as she walked, throwing her clothes on the ground. Huh. That seems like a great vacation there. Where is this place anyways? I don't think they said, but... Huh. Huh. I go jump down the pier as our fishing boat grew closer to the shore. Fishing boat? As the boat began slowing down, I threw Katakago the backpack with our things. Ugh. I go caught it without problems. I picked up my handbag and stepped up on the pier next to her, my sandals pressing against the old wood with a dry creek. This looks nice. I go glance around the island that we just reached. We're at the small inlet of an island at short boat ride, a short boat ride away from the port. Judging by the size and the arrangement of the ancient planks all over the place, I assumed the pier we walked on to be handmade. Water below the white wood was clear and translucent. We could easily spot bright red corals lining the seabed, all visible to the naked eye. As I continued down the pier toward the beach, I heard the engine of the boat whirring to life behind me. I turned around to see Tiger exchanging a few words with the captain, then the boat drifted away. Ah. Oh. 
I'm gonna end the episode here, everybody. Seems like they're going on a fishing trip, and it might be super fun, or if Tagler's gonna fall in, who knows? I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!